Hello everyone, Scott here. Welcome back to Storytime. Today we're reading The Misadventures of the Galloping Goose, retold by Philip Nelson and illustrated by Patricia Sinex. Let's get started. Once upon a time, sort of long ago and kind of far away, there was a little railroad called the Rio Grande Southern. This narrow-gauge, short-line railroad carried people, mail, and freight over 161 miles of mountain passes, valleys, and steep cliffs in southwestern Colorado. The Rio Grande Southern mostly carried supplies to gold and silver mines, but it also carried mineral ores back from the mines to smelters in Durango and Denver. And it carried sheep and cattle from ranches along the line, as well as lumber cut from trees to build houses in the towns like Dolores, Telluride, Durango, Ophir, and Ridgeway. It even carried people going to work or to visit family. During the 1930s, when there were few jobs for people and not a lot of business for the railroad, Mr. Miller, the railroad manager, wanting to cut the costs of running the railroad. He said to Jack, the master mechanic in Ridgeway, we need to run a train every day to move the passengers, the US mail, packages, and some freight items. But to run a large steam locomotive with an engineer, a fireman to shovel tons of coal, and a brakeman in the caboose is just too expensive. We need to think of something else. So, a somewhat feather-brained idea was hatched. Take an automobile for passengers, add a frame, and add flanged wheels and a box for freight. Use a little gas instead of tons of coal, and make the engineer a motorman. Yes, this should do it. Master Mechanic Jack, with the help of the backshop boys at the Ridgeway Roundhouse, got busy building something. They welded, sawed, nailed, cut, torched, riveted, sanded, machined, hammered, and painted. Some kind of thing. The first thing was built with a Buick Master 6 automobile with added flanged wheels from a railroad car and a box built on the back of it. And then a cowcatcher was added to the front to make it look like a train. Even though the motor-powered thing looked funny, it worked well and was put to use right away moving passengers, mail, and small freight items. The thing was originally called a motor. The local people were not sure of what they saw. The wheels, not totally round, Rolling on uneven rails made the thing bounce and waddle down the track. The engine covers from the automobile front were left open to keep the engine from overheating. They flapped up and down with every bump and bounce on the track. The passengers, unsure of the newfangled thing flying over the track with a honking horn instead of a solid whistle of a steam locomotive, were flabbergasted. Why, look at that contraption, waddling and flapping and honking, just like some kind of galloping goose. Thus, it came to be called the Galloping Goose. The Galloping Goose was so successful that six more were hatched, similar to the original, but each different. They were built from 1920s era Pierce Arrow automobiles and spare railroad parts. Although the Gaggle of Geese fleet was successful for the railroad, a few problems came home to roost. Sometimes there were animals on the tracks. On another occasion, the railroad got into trouble with the U.S. Postal Inspector when a U.S. mailbag and some mail was singed from getting too close to the wood stove which was in the passenger compartment to keep the passengers warm. The mail inspector also became worried that passengers would start reading the mail. Sometimes, rocks blocked the tracks. 
One day, there was serious trouble. A goose and its passenger were leaving the snowshed at the top of Lizard Head Pass when the galloping goose's drive shaft broke, which also broke the line to the brakes. The galloping goose started to fly down the pass faster and faster toward Trout Lake. Motorman Fred was unable to slow the flapping goose. He had to think fast. What could he do to save the passengers? So Fred told the passengers to fly the coop. They flew safely out of the fast-moving goose into snowbanks. Then Fred himself flew off the goose, which was now on the loose, and flying very fast down the tracks with nobody to fly it. Motorman Fred ran to the nearest telephone along the rail line and called the station agent at Ofer. A goose has flown the coop, and if it doesn't fly off the track, it'll be flying your way really soon. The station agent called the track workers at Vance Junction as the galloping goose flew past her station. There's a runaway goose on the loose. Try to catch it. The track workers grabbed a nearby large chain and threw it across the rails. And a little further down, they threw a second chain across the rails. After all, if one is good, two are better. The workers then waited a safe distance away to see what would happen. Would the chains stop the goose? Would this wild goose chase be over? The flying goose hit the first chain, crashing and banging over the chain, but not stopping. The first chain just slowed the runaway goose. The second chain was dragged along the track by the wheels of the goose. And with a loud and long screech, the goose finally rattled and groaned to a stop. Yes, the wild goose chase was finally over. The passengers had a long walk to the station with their feathers a little ruffled, but otherwise unharmed. The galloping goose was up and waddling and flapping and honking on the tracks the very next day. Despite all of the feathery troubles, the fleet of galloping geese kept the Rio Grande Southern in business for many more years. So it could be said that the galloping goose was the golden egg that saved the Rio Grande Southern Railroad. The end. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's pop on over to Ronnie for an amazing craft. Hi everyone. Happy New Year. This is Ronnie, your craft master here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. So we're excited because we have a book called The Misadventures of the Galloping Goose, which I'm sure you enjoyed hearing from Scott. But we are going to do a craft that goes with that. So let's get started and see what you need. First, you're gonna need some markers or crayons. Today I have markers. And then you're gonna need a sheet that we have that you can download here on our website. So let's get started. So one of the things that they carry back and forth on the galloping goose was people. So I think I'm going to make part of the galloping goose. And there were seven total. I'm just going to put windows in here. And then I'm going to put some wheels. Probably a few more here, here. But in my galloping goose, I'm going to make sure that there's some people in there. People used to travel on the galloping goose. These my little people. They also had food that they would transfer back and forth up and down the mountain. So maybe I'll make some apples. Oh, these are pink apples. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
They also had maybe some oranges. And put a few more fruits and veggies in here. And then one of the most important things that they brought back and forth was the mail. So I'm gonna make some little packages, maybe some letters, little envelopes, lots of packages. Never know who's gonna bring stuff. And then maybe to remind us that this is the galloping goose, I'll put galloping goose on here. But you can have all the fun you want in creating your very own galloping goose. So there you go. Let me show you other examples that people have done for us. Here's somebody who just thought about the food going back and forth on the galloping goose. Here's some really creative ones that maybe even animals were on there and there was a, maybe a caboose attached. That oh, might be a good idea so these guys can rest. Ah, there's one that's all about the mail. That's really good. And here's a uh, better example of what maybe it looked like back then. I hope you have lots of fun making your own galloping goose. I know I enjoyed sharing that with you and I really enjoyed the story. I look forward to seeing you all next time and you have a great month. Bye. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be sure to visit our online gift shop for a wide variety of train-themed children's books.